Hello, Saint. You are now listening to the teaching sermon from the God Life Assembly, Joss. May you be blessed as you listen. I pour my love. I pour my love on you. Just pour your love on him. Let something about you reach out to him. Love is a language, it's in a language of the heart. So speak it right now. Desire him in a, in a way that adore him. Want to be with him. upon him with admiration that's how you pour love on him it's not a vague thing it's another way of saying admire the Lord just admire him oh you're beautiful you're glorious to behold you are the sum of all perfection and tender full of mercy you're loving and perfect in all your ways you 
one thing I know It is you Always of my heart Always of my heart Always of my heart Always of my heart The Son of God is 
is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. Ah, the Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God ah, is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God. Oh, God, I'm 
Morgana.
hallow your name. And because it's a God, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed above every other name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. In heaven, hallowed be thy name. On the earth, hallowed be thy name. In hell, hallowed be thy name. In my heart, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be his name. Israel was only allowed to call that name once a year. And say Yahweh. It wasn't a name to be held in contempt. Thou shalt not uphold his name in vain. It's not that God gets angry when you uphold his name in vain. No. Is that what should be hallowed becomes common. And how hallowed his name is has an effect on how we see him and how we receive him. Now we have the right and the access to call his name a thousand times a day. Who can sing songs with his name? Just Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. That was what some people had to call just once a year. We now have access to the name so that we can access all the power that is in the name. But the fear is because we now have it, we can begin to lose the regard no, no, we have for the name. And when we do, the power afforded us in the name begins to fade. It's not that his name has become less powerless. It's just that we call it now with contempt. Sounds like a simple thing. And it is a simple thing. Do you know what a name is? A name is not just a title. It's not a designation. The name of a person is supposed to be the record of who they are and the prophecy of what they must be. That's what a name is. Listen, if Shegun is a warrior, he, he, he can, he, with, with one sword, he can kill a thousand men. If he's a warrior, and someone in our midst gets up and says, Shegun the warrior. Do you know what the mention of his name is supposed to do to you? He's supposed to, in a, in a split moment, he's supposed to 
quickly gather the tales of Shagun's might and display it before your eyes. Do you understand that? Does that make sense to you? So you're supposed to quickly in a moment gather the tale of Shagun's victories and display them before you. And then quickly you are, you are brazen to receive him in his might. If you were afraid before and they said, Shagun is here. Instantly, the mention of his name, what does he do to you? Why? Because with his name comes the remembrance of his feats. Does that make sense to you? Every time you call a name, you are recalling the record of the person's feet. Are you with me? But every time you call a name, you are also recalling the prophetic, um, um, the prophetic possibilities that are captured in the name. So whenever you say the name of God, what are you doing? What, what, what is that name supposed to do to you? But you know, too many times you just say, you know, God, and we pass. Without an ounce of thought, without recognition of what we just called up. Oh, no. Every time you call the name of God, what did you do? You just called up his credentials. Amen. So, can we take the next one minute and call on the name of the Lord? Now, this time around, don't, don't, don't call it as a syllable in your speech. It's not just a syllable that makes your sentence make sense. You are introducing the credential of God when you call on his name. So do you understand what the psalmist meant when he said, I will call on the name of the Lord? He's not just saying, I will mention his name so that you hear it in my speech. No. It's a, I will call on. That's why the Bible says, the name of the Lord is what? It's a reality. You enter into it. The name, it has the ability to to in an instant. So the Bible says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be, you see that call upon, it's not, it's not they that mention his name in his speech. No, it's they that call upon. Can you call upon the name of the Lord into your present reality? Bring him in. Introduce the name of the Lord into where you stand. Call on him. Call on him. <laughs> if you're experiencing dryness, call on the one whose words brings the rain. If you are confused, Call on the one who is wisdom. Call on him right now. Oh,
You don't have long to do it, so do it. Call on him over your children. Lord, I call on you. Call on the name of the Lord. Call on him in your ministry. Lord, I call on you. <laughs> e- Call on him in your family. You're struggling in your relationship with your spouse. Call on the name of the Lord. Don't mention his name. Call on him. We lift you up. We lift you up Yahweh We lift you up Yahweh You are at the night
you we call upon. It's your name we call upon. <laughs> Step right into our spaces. It is to your name we've run to hide. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we bless the name of Jesus. pray just one prayer and uh, just one prayer tonight it's been a prayer in my heart you know, from from earlier today second timothy 3 the prayer is in second timothy 3 it's 10 second timothy 3 let us to pray in this prayer as we prepare for the women conference but it's beyond that it's beyond it's beyond just that because this was a prayer in my heart and I felt we should also pray you know for the women as we as we enter into the conference Now Paul was speaking to Timothy, he said, but thou has fully known my, look at the word there, fully, thou has fully known, thou has what? Fully known, thou has what? Fully known, we are the season of perfections, do you know what I just said? We are what? In the season of perfections. There are all manners of fullness that we'll be coming into, different kinds of fullness. There are many fullnesses. The Bible, we're going to talk about in the fullness of time, in the fullness of knowledge, fullness of understanding, fullness of faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are many, many kinds of fullnesses that we're coming into. Anyone with me? And it is the Lord that will do a quickening, a quick work and bring us into the perfection of that fullness. Listen, there, there are, it doesn't mean that all of us are in the same places in our lives. No. But there's a season of maturing. How many of you know what the function of the latter rain is? The latter rain is the maturing rain. Amen. The latter rain has an effect, an extra effect that um, the former rain doesn't have. The latter rain comes to mature. So when the latter rain begins to come, you find out that it seems like in an instant, everything matures at once. You look at a farm and you will see some that are sharpshooters, are way ahead of others that are young. Are you following me? You, you find that, you know, it, even in animal rearing you find some they call jumpers those who those who are way ahead of others in in and then when the latter rain comes the latter rain has an effect and what's the effect is that somehow it has a way of and it's just a coming together of season it's not just about the rain but something about the season of harvest makes that everything seems to ripen at the same time are you with me are you with me everything seems to what ripen at the same time so those who are slow would find an extraordinary speed to catch up with those who are ahead in ripening amen amen there's a posture that you're going to enter into and the lord will do a quickening work that will allow you catch up with your seasons are you following me it might seem like you are slightly behind your season but you are not because there's a latter rain and the latter rain has the ability to quicken and cause everything planted to arrive at season of harvest uh, is anyone with me One of the reasons why a lot of our women were able to arise and say, I can, is not because once upon a time, all of them were doing the same thing. But something is going to happen to everybody that everybody will mature enough to say, I can. And when they say, I can, they will not be faking it. 
It won't be just a confession of possibility. No, there will be a ripening that allows one stand at harvest of what is there in the fullness of time. And time there is not chronos, it's kairos. It is the coming together of the Lord's arrangements. So there are many things you have heard before that their fullness is coming. There are many things you have attempted before that their fullness has come. Oh. Thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my charity, my patience. Follow me. We'll, we'll, we'll just declare prayer and we'll be out of here. Next, next verse. Next, let's go. Next verse, please. Okay. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but, but out of them all, the Lord did what? Delivered me. Next verse, next verse. Please stay with me. You have to, you have to be fast. Let me just open my Bible. You know, let me use good. It says, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed knowing from whom you have learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus then all scripture is bred out by God and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for training in righteousness now listen to verse 17 that the man of God may be Thoroughly furnished unto Lord. Oh, calm down. I want you to listen to that verse again. That the man of God may be underline the word perfect. So those of you who shout and say perfection is not possible, that the man of God may be perfect. secondly. No, how furnished? Scarcely furnished, moderately furnished, averagely furnished. Another translation says completely furnished. Hey, hey, hey. Unto how many good works? Some good works. Listen, listen to me. Say with me, under God, it's possible to be equipped to answer every question thrown at me. You better believe it. I know what it means to stand before things, Pastor Edusa, and you don't have the... I'm not saying you don't have explanation. I'm saying... There are times, answers is no explanation. Answer is raise the dead. There are times that answer is cast out the devil. There are times, answer is to transfer two million. <laughs> uh, see, listen, that I can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's what I want to enter your head. For how many good work? 
For how many good work? Listen, listen. If, if there are good works in our midst that we're not able to answer, it cannot be because of the absence of furnishing. No, no. Did you hear what I just said? Soon enough, it will never be because we are not furnished. Because I'm trying to tell us, the seasons ahead of us is what? Is the fullness of time. So every furnishing is coming into place. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I wish you heard me. I wish you heard me. I wish you heard me. Neza, what does it mean to be furnished? It means your kitchen has how many things you need? <laughs> if it's for carrot, you have what to cut it. If you want the carrot square, you can. If you want it round, you have it. If you want it sliced, you I don't know what you think. But I stood before the Lord and I said, Now, nah, can a man be fully equipped for every good work? The Lord said to me, yes. And I said, okay, I want it. And I'm saying to you, and I'm saying to you that the seasons that are ahead of us, the seasons that are right ahead of us, and, and, and this conference is going to be one of those expressions. One of the things that God will be doing in this conference, it will be, he, he'll be, he'll be furnishing you. My goodness. He'll be furnishing you. Listen, it won't just be knowledge. God will be dropping things in your life. The right things that you need. Uh, wisdom for the things of wisdom. They will drop on you. Wisdom for the things of wisdom, they will drop on you. Connections for the things of connections, you will receive them. In the name of Jesus, everything you need, everything you need to execute every good work, a man can be fully furnished. And I say to you, people of God, that if we open up ourselves to the divine workings of God in this season, we are going to experience furnishings we have never imagined possible in our lives. What you call perfection is possible. Furnishings you cannot explain. Abilities you cannot explain. Giftings you cannot explain. Workings you cannot explain. You are right in the midst of it. It wasn't by mistake that pastor came here and activated gifts. What do you think the gifts are for? They are what? Furnishings. What are they? Furnishings. Equipping for every good work. Say with me. I am equipped for every good work. In this season, I come to the perfection required to answer every, every, Every question thrown at me. Yeah. Women, take note. Take note. <laughs> Someone bless the Lord. That's the prayer. Oh, that's all. Just pray. That's all. That's the prayer. You're seeing it there. You are seeing the prayer there. Pray it. <laughs> I am equipped fully equipped thoroughly furnished my goodness I am equipped fully equipped thoroughly furnished for every good work hey, for every good work that ministry in my heart I am equipped fully furnished thoroughly furnished to execute the counsel of God that business brewing I am equipped fully furnished thoroughly furnished to execute the counsel of God that album the Lord is laying in my heart I am equipped fully furnished thoroughly furnished to execute the counsel of God the man God is calling me to raise declare it I am equipped fully equipped thoroughly thoroughly furnished thoroughly furnished Pray it, declare it, declare it. Let everything hear you. Declare it. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Everything I need comes to me now. Everything missing comes to me now. In the name of Jesus, my equipping is here. My equipping is here. This is my fullness of time. It is the coming together of the processes of God in my life. 
many, many, listen, 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 listen to me. The, 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 Lord, the Lord is saying to me, there, there are many of you, the Lord has started many processes in your life. They look disjointed. Do you understand what I'm saying? He starts these stops here. Do you understand? And you can't explain it, right? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't what? The Lord is saying it's going to make sense in this season. Why? Because there's going to be a coming together of all these disjointed processes. <laughs> it's like a puzzle. The Lord is just going to drop one piece that will make everything make sense. Ah, you are going to receive the word that will make everything make sense. You are going to receive the wisdom that will make everything make sense. You are going to receive the counsel that's going to make everything make sense. In the name of Jesus, receive it now. Is the Lord giving it to you? The Lord is going to find a way to find you. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. It's a wisdom. It makes everything make sense. <laughs> ah. Hey. I experienced that kind of wisdom one time in my life. There were many things that I never understood why. Until I stood one day. And then the Lord said to me. These are the reasons. You see. This and this. This was where I was bringing you all together. In the first place. This was why that happened. That was why this happened. That was why. I, I did not know when I threw my hands up into the air and began to thank the Lord for processes I never understood. Listen, listen. God has a purpose for everything you have gone through. Do you hear what I said? God does not waste experiences. Even your failures, God is not about to waste them. Say with me, it's going to make sense. Ah, it's about to make sense. It's all coming together. <laughs> Bless the Lord, somebody. It's all, it's, all it's all coming together. 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 Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. I wish I was only... I was only, I was only motivating you. I wish I was only saying wishes. No, this is the word of the Lord. Blessings be multiplied. Favor on every side. Nothing shall be denied. This is the word of the Lord. Blessings be multiplied. Favor on every side. Nothing shall be denied. Yeah, this is the word of the Lord. Blessings be multiplied. Favor on every side. Nothing shall be denied. And this is the word of the Lord. Blessings be multiplied. Favor on every side. Nothing shall be denied. This is the word of the Lord. Blessings be multiplied. Favor on every side. Nothing shall be denied. This is the word. Say, this is the Say word again. of the Lord. Blessings on every side. On every Nothing side. shall be denied. Nothing shall be denied. This is the word of the. This is the word of the Lord. Blessings be multiplied. Favor. Nothing shall be denied. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Blessings be multiplied. Favor. Nothing shall be. Nothing shall be denied. This is the word. This is the word of the Lord. Blessings be multiplied. Favor on every side. Nothing shall be denied. This is the word. This is the word of the Lord. Do you know, do you know the only line I'm interested in? Nothing shall be denied. 
Say, nothing shall be denied. Ah, this is the word of Second. the Lord. Nothing shall be denied. This is the word of Say the Lord. Again. Nothing shall be denied. This is the word of nothing the Lord. Nothing shall be This is the word of this is the word of the Lord. Blessings be multiplied. Favor, favor on every side. Nothing, Nothing shall be denied. This is the word. Listen. This is the word of the Lord. Let's say this ten times. Just ten times. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's say it ten times. Say, 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 say it. Say it knowing what you're saying. Say, say it looking at what you are saying. Ah, are, are, you, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, ready, go. Say, blessings be multiplied. Favor. Favor on every side. Nothing. Nothing shall be denied. So this is the word. One. This is the word of the two. I believe it I receive it that settles it say it I believe it I receive it and that Pastor Papa
We have come to the end of today's sermon. You can listen to more sermons from www.pastorchintok.com or listen to our teaching podcast from Google, Apple and Spotify podcast services using the channel The GLA Podcast.